All right, I'm going to do a video here real quickly on my stand. Just I need to explain and clarify my stand on the spirit of Antichrist issue. Um, did two videos. One was the thing of saying that Jesus is the Lord um, and saying watch out for people that say Jesus is Lord. Uh, the charismatics like to do that, other false people and whatever else. Um, and then I also did the thing of, of challenging people to come out and say, can you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? You say, now why did you do that? Well, we're going to go to Acts chapter 20, and I'm going to show you the qualifications to be a preacher, And but I'm just going to jump ahead here to explain things. Um, and one of those qualifications, one of the things, the, the job description, so to speak, of what you do when you're a preacher is you need to expose false brethren, okay? False prophets, false brethren, false preachers, false ministries, whatever. Uh, that has to be there. You can't just say, well, I'm just going to preach all sound doctrine and then people will figure it out. No, no, you don't do that. You don't say, I'm just going to take these sheep out here into this pasture and I'm going to give them the best food to eat. I'm going to give them a nice spring water over here where they can go and, and they'll be watered over there and nice shelter at night to keep them nice and warm. But I'm not going to worry about any wolves coming in. I'm not going to try to fight off the wolves. They will come in to, to destroy the flock. Uh, no, you don't do that. A real pastor, a real preacher, um, a man in ministry will spend time exposing false prophets, false brethren. Okay, that's just going to be there. And one of the easy ways to do that is to play a little game that I like to say, you know, call it uh, hook the heretic, so to speak. Um, I understand a lot of things that, that heretics believe and whatever else. And so I came out with those studies, the Jesus is the Lord thing and then the uh, spirit of Antichrist challenge thing. I came out with those um, because I know that there are certain false ministries out there that would fall for it. And I would be able to hook them and show people another proof that guy's false. He does not believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This one over here says Jesus is Lord, not the Lord. So uh, that was the purpose of me doing that as a way to expose false ministries, false brethren, as the Bible calls them. Um, it was never meant as some kind of a thing that you just forget about somebody's testimony. Um, you forget about what their, their doctrinal stands are. If they can pass those two tests, then somehow they're a Christian. Uh, I never intended it for that purpose. And, you know, that's why I'm making this video to clarify that position. But let's go to Acts chapter 20. And we're going to look about the thing here of the qualifications. There's a bunch of different places you can get the qualifications to be a preacher. Uh, sort of the things that you have to do, the things that you can expect. And we're going to go over these real quickly here. Um, and, and, you know, again, this is my way of answering this whole Spirit of Antichrist challenge thing, uh, what I really intended, but also as a way to teach uh, other men out there, young men and things, what you can expect if you get into full-time ministry, All right? Um, Paul is our example. Paul says, be followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. You know, so um, the Apostle Paul is the example for a Gentile believer like myself. Um, let's start here, Acts chapter 20, verse 17. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the, by the lying in wait of the Jews. Okay, what do we see? First one there. I'll write these out. The first thing that you're going to go through when you get into full-time ministry, I counted uh, seven of them. There could, maybe I'm missing some, but um, number one, you have emotional stress. <laughs> we just read about it there in uh, verse 19. Okay, look at it again. I'll just do it this way. Verse 19. Okay. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind. You're humble. You don't really, you're not trying to make yourself some celebrity or whatever else. Um, with many tears. 
you're going to have tears. You're going to cry in the ministry. Uh, and temptations, the devil's going to attack you extra hard. <laughs> and um, which befell me by the by the lying in wait of the Jews. Uh, there's going to be people that are after you. So emotional stress is going to be there. That's a big part of the ministry. I've gone through plenty of it. All right, verse 20. Uh, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. All right, the second thing, um, and you can actually look down to verse 27, because he says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So verse 20 and verse 27, he says, I kept back nothing, you know, that was profitable unto you. And then down there in verse 20, no, I'm sorry, I read verse 28. Verse 27, for I have not shunned to, to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So, excuse me, verse 28 is good too. But uh, Verse 20 and verse 27, he's saying, I've preached everything that I know to preach. I don't say, well, that's that's a loaded question. I remember going to this one Mount Zion Baptist Church, Pastor Keith Schweitzer, and somebody said, how do I answer a Buddhist that says, you know, I believe that all paths are good to God or whatever else? And he said, well, that's a loaded question. I'd have to do a bigger study. And I thought, you can, man, you can answer that thing in a couple seconds. We have an authority, authoritative, authoritative standard that prophesies the future. They don't. Simple. Problem solved. But see, you know, it's just too much. And I'll have to maybe do a study sometime if there's good money in it or something. You know, um, anybody that's familiar with my ministry knows that I have not held back on anything. Okay, people send me information. I bring it out. Uh, there aren't many preachers that do that. No glory to me. It's just my personal convictions. So, number two, the second qualification, no holding back when it comes to preaching the whole counsel of God. You know, you don't have to come to a special university or some kind of special classes that I give, you know, or whatever else. Uh, no. Let me just put this list over here. Verses 20 and 27. Okay. Of Acts chapter 20. And notice also there in verse 20, have taught you publicly and from house to house. Okay, that's the third one there. Public uh, ministry and private um, meetings, I guess I could say. All right, again, verse 20. Um, again, I don't, I don't talk about this. You know, I don't, I don't videotape. If, if we're going to go meet with somebody or whatever else in the local area here, I don't videotape it. I have met with people privately, and I have no problem with that. Uh, somebody wants to come into the area here or whatever else and meet with us, that's fine. You know, in terms of, hey, can we just meet and I'd like to talk to you about some things or whatever else? Fine. Absolutely. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not some weird cultic, you know, oh, no, I can't talk to people in person. I like talking to people in person uh, very much. I just don't like the, the social club gatherings of, you know, church buildings. But public ministry, that's what YouTube is. You know, I get people and they say, you know, uh, where's, where's video ministry at in the Bible? Well, where's, you know, church buildings in the Bible? You know, that's because it's usually that type of pe person that says about the thing of where's video ministry because they're trying to justify their church building. But uh, it's public ministry, okay? Um, Paul wrote letters to churches. I, you know, I write letters to people too, but uh, I also do video to people to get to people all around the world. Uh, it's going to be a little hard for me to do that as a face-to-face, in-person type of a thing. I can't travel all over the world. Uh, it's a lot easier to just put things online. Okay. Um, let's go continue here. Verse 21. Um, Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. 
repentance toward God. You're a sinner. You come to him broken, contrite, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, that needs to be preached. Right? The two parts to, to biblical salvation there. Are you a sinner? Get the person to be broken before you can offer the fix. You need to understand that you're sick before I can offer the cure. Okay, it's not that you have to heal yourself by doing good works and then you get a cure later. No, that doesn't make any sense. That's lordship salvation. Fix up your life, get rid of all these sins, and then God grants you repentance or something. That's Calvinistic philosophy. It's not what the Bible teaches. All right. Verse 22. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me. Um, shall befall me there. Say that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Um, verses 22 through 24. What's that? Number four. Possible prison and death in my future. Like I said, that would be verses 22 through 24. I realize that. Uh, right now, I still have the freedom to be able to, to preach and teach the Word of God and things publicly. Um, but the time could come, they could shift some laws around and stuff. I could be going to jail. I've had di different brethren tell me that. They say, boy, if you were in my country, you'd be in prison. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. Again, you know, oh, you're such a coward hiding behind your camera. I'm not hiding behind a camera. First of all, I talk with people when I'm out in public. Okay, I don't record that. That's the quickest way to shut down the conviction of the Holy Spirit is to stick somebody, stick a camera in their face and say, hey, I'm trying to get famous with this video. I'm trying to get a lot of views. No, I will never do that. I don't record things publicly that I do. Never. Um, but to say I'm some kind of coward or whatever else, uh, I attack whatever evil organization out there. Uh, the Jesuits are a very, very powerful organization, and I have never shunned to attack them. And what could that lead to? My death, my imprisonment. I understand that. And Paul's saying, I don't know what's going to befall me. There's a lot of prophecy. You know, every time I go to a city, they're prophesying, saying, you're going to be in trouble here in the future. Bonds and afflictions, Paul, coming for you. And Paul says, well, that doesn't move me. God calls you to be a preacher. You can't worry about that stuff. You just simply say, okay, Lord, you know, hey, I have a wife and, and son. Um, but, uh, you know, Lord, if, if you want me to go to jail, I'll go to jail. You're going to have to do something to protect them or whatever else. But I don't really want to go to jail. But, you know, I'm not going to stop preaching. And uh, if you're going to join ministry, go full time in ministry, that's something that you need to think about. You need to think about possible death and prison time in the future. It's just there. Um, let's continue here. Um, verse 25, And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Uh, wherefore I take you to, rec to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. There you have no holding back. Um, verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Verse 29, now here we go. Verses 29 through 31, this is where I use the heretic hook thing. Hook the heretic game that I like to play. Verse 29, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. I mean, can you imagine what happens if I get shut down on YouTube? Can you imagine the wolves that will join in among the Bible-believing Christians? I mean, James White calls himself a Bible believer now, and Stephen Anderson calls himself a Bible believer. <laughs> they never did in the past. Now all of a sudden they're trying to cozy up to our movement and say, Oh, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. 
No, you're not. No, you're not. You know, and, and Gene Kim comes out, you know, clickbait Kim, real Bible believers. <laughs> no, he's not. You know, go back to your little UFOs and alien blue bloods and whatever else stuff and, you know, monetize your videos. Verse 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. I can't tell you how many people contacted me after Jeremy Carter was disfellowshipped with, and they said, hey, Jeremy told me that you said this and that about me and whatever else. Different people I knew of that I, you know, stopped hearing from, found out, oh yeah, Jeremy went after them. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Verse 31, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. It is the most frustrating thing, I think, of all the thing of being in ministry. The most frustrating thing is seeing people infiltrate and come and try to draw away people. You know, um, again, I've, I've heard stories of, you know, this uh, uh, Edward Fenninger's female altar, uh, Deborah Gill, and um, she's emails people. She'll find somebody that likes the videos and she'll, she'll send them, you know, messages and whatever else. I, I don't know if she can, I guess you can't do it through private message anymore on YouTube because that's gone, but she used to do that, you know, trying to pull people away, lying to them about me, <laughs> whose damnation is just, you know, I mean, it's the Holy Spirit of God. Boy, they're the ones that are genuinely saved. They just go and try to, mess with people's heads by lying about a preacher. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, here's the whole point. I put out the spirit of Antichrist challenge thing. I forgot to write that, write that one down. Five. One minute. <laughs> Number five. Expose false Brethren, verses 29, what is it? Yeah, 29 through 31. 29 through 31. Okay? And I'll draw the little heretic hook here. Okay? You go fishing for heretics. Um, you see, there's a lot of heretics out there that I realize do not believe that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. They don't believe he's eternal. They believe he's created. Um, there was a spirit there, and that spirit later on took flesh and whatever. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ is eternal. He is God. He is holy, completely God. All right. Um, but see, by me putting out that little test, it was meant to be a hook whereby I could catch some heretics and get people to see, oh, wow, I can't believe this guy actually said whatever. Has come, has come. It doesn't matter has come or is come. It means the same thing. No, it does not. All right, that's why I put that out there. I also put out this thing of um, this thing of watch out for people that say Jesus is Lord because I saw that uh, Brian Moonan was coming out with things his KJV prepper you know, ministry, oh brother, and he's coming out with this thing of hats that say Jesus is Lord. Uh, that's not what the Bible says. Jesus is the Lord. Okay, and again, you know, the new versions will take out the so. Look out for that. That was the purpose of the whole thing. I was not trying to make a, a some kind of a magical thing out there where all somebody has to do is just say, Jesus is the Lord. I believe and confess Jesus is the Lord. And I believe and confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And then boom, they're automatically saved. And you can just forget about their testimony or the doctrines that they preach or believe or whatever. No, no, no. Okay. Obviously, somebody can come out and say, I'm a Christian. I've prayed the prayer. I've done this. I've done that. You know, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10 says that there has to be belief in the heart and confession with the mouth. All right. That has to be there, which we'll see here. And then, you know, another thing there, too, uh, which we'll look at here in just a couple minutes. But I never intended for it to become this test type of thing. I was merely trying to catch heretics to show people that these people are false brethren. Okay. Um, and then uh, continuing here, um, verse 32, 
Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Okay, what's number six? Number six, God's word is your authority. Okay, verse uh, 32. And I don't even need to really go over that one because anybody that's watched my ministry for a long time, I mean, King James Video Ministries, it's not Brian Denlinger Ministries or something. Um, no, King James Video Ministries. The King James Bible is your final authority. Okay? And then... Um, verse uh, 33, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel, Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Okay, so number seven. Um, number seven here. I am not all capital letters not in this for for the money that's one of the big lies that my enemies like to say about me and they repeat that one over and over and over again because they don't have anything better that they can say and that's verses um, 33 through 35 now, again, if you're brand new to the ministry and you haven't heard me defend this whole thing before, you might say, well, yeah, but you do ask for donations. Okay, that's a normal thing. I am permitted to do that. Um, if I'm feeding the flock, I can eat of the fruit of the flock. All right, I, again, I've done studies on that. Does King James Video Ministries require 10% tithe? Is probably one of the better known ones that was preached many years ago. Um, if I was in it for the money, number one, um, I would have a church building. All right, you can get more money that way. Number two, I would monetize my channel. Number three, I would not speak about controversial issues that actually make me lose support. Okay, I've had a number of times where I've reached some kind of a dividing line doctrine and I say, okay, if I preach this, I'm going to lose a lot of support. And I do. And I go ahead and preach it anyways. All right. Um, I mean, compare my preaching to that of Joel Osteen or Kenneth Copeland. Those guys are obviously in it for the money flying around private jets and, you know, buying sports stadiums and living in huge big mansions and whatever else. Okay, compare them to me. I mean, give me a break. Uh, we don't make that much money, all right? Actually, our desire is to make less as time goes by in the sense of we're trying to save money or to say it this way, make money by saving money. All right, uh, in other words, make our mon monthly expenditures get smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, that's why we bought land. That's why we built our own place. So we have no mortgage. We bought land uh, out in the country so that we can eat, you know, wild plants and fruits and whatever else. We can forage for food and hunt and fish. Okay. I'm trying to take my expenditures down. If I was in it for the money, if I coveted men's gold and silver, I would be preaching differently. And I would be saying, we bought this big church, we bought this million dollar building, whatever. I would be preaching prosperity. So that is the point of this ministry. These seven points right here. And if you're going to go into ministry that's going to be blessed by God and that's going to earn rewards in heaven, these are the things that you need to think about. Number one, emotional stress. Um, I mean, some of you have little channels. Most of my followers have very small channels, um, maybe a thousand subscribers or less a lot of times. Maybe you might have a few thousand subscribers. But you make a video and you know, just little videos, you get some serious attacks and people, you know, casting out your name as evil and saying all kinds of horrible stuff. Um, and I, I, I know a lot of you have said, brother, you know, what I've gotten has been horrible. I can't imagine what you've gone through over the years. 
emotional stress. <laughs> okay, number two, if you're going to have a ministry, you can't hold back. You have to declare the whole counsel of God. You can't say, oh, uh, that one's going to get me in trouble. I better not do that. I better not preach that. You have to go, go at it. And if the Lord shows you something and He wants you to preach it, then you preach it. Don't be a man pleaser. Number three, public ministry and private meetings. Okay. Um, I tried street preaching years ago and I found it to be very ineffective. Um, again, you know, when they were preaching publicly in the book of Acts, when, when uh, people used to do public discourses, people would stop and they would listen, you know, and things and they would, you know, oh, that's interesting. Or they would react in different ways or they, you know, whatever. That was normal in the past. Okay. The whole television and then internet, everything else, even telephones have caused people to distance themselves, you know, social distancing before it was actually verbalized as a rule. But, you know, the modern world is not like it once was. Okay. And I'm not trying to make excuses and whatever, you know, and stuff, but I'm just saying things have changed. So to have a public ministry where you go out on the corner and you read the Bible and you, you know, whatever, that's just not there right now. Okay. Maybe it'll come back in the time of Jacob's trouble or, Maybe things will change enough that it'll be back before the Lord catches us up. I have no idea. But right now, you, you go out and you, and you street preach, and I used to do it, and you'd street preach, and people, they, they look at you, oh, there's somebody speaking loud over there. Oh, you know. And we never were into the Team Jesus nutty stuff of, you know, repent, you know, and stuff. No, what? no, you know, queers or something. You know, no, no, we never did that stuff. It was just reading the Bible and whatever else, and people... Uh, you know, it's ineffective. So public ministry now um, is what I'm doing right here. Uh, it's YouTube. It's putting stuff on the website, putting my website on my vehicles and driving around that way. People can check it out. And I see people doing it all the time too, by the way. It's very effective. And I've seen in the comments, it's so funny. I'll see people saying, who else is here because of the minivan that had, you know, this URL on the back window or something. <laughs> Thank you to everybody out there that does that. Um, again, you know, it's about getting people in and getting them straightened out doctrinally. It's not about making money or whatever else. I don't, I've never been actually contacted and, and given a donation by somebody that said, Hey, I saw your website and I, I'm sending a donation. That's never happened. It's just, you know, Hey, I found your tract in the, in the store here where I'm in my area, or I saw the website or whatever else, but we'll be driving someplace and I'll, <clears throat> I have King James video ministries.com on my vehicles. And we'll be driving and I'll see, you know, we pull up to a stop sign and I, and I see somebody and they look over and I see them, they go down to their phone or whatever and they're typing in the, you know, website. What is it? Public ministry. That's what that is. And somebody comes along and says, hey, I'd like to meet with you. I'm in the area. I'd like to meet with you. Absolutely. When do you want to meet? We'll, we'll talk all day with somebody. There's no, okay, you have an hour beginning now, you know, start talking, you know, no, we'll, we'll gladly talk with people, go from house to house. In other words, number four, possible prison and death in your future. If you're a preacher, you have to realize that, especially the way things are going. Um, and you just say, none of these things move me. I'm going to keep preaching the whole counsel of God. I'm not going to hold back on, on what the Lord wants me to preach. Number five, you have to expose false brethren. You cannot be in ministry and just zip, you know, keep your mouth shut. You know, there are certain people that believe certain ways, and I don't want to name their certain ministries and their certain churches. And there's no, no, no. no. You have to name names. Okay, um, you have to come out against these antichrists. You have to come out against people that that believe in all this Catholic stuff, the Trinity, and whatever you know things. Um, you have to name names. You have to expose false brethren. That was the point. My little hook the heretic game that I tried to play there. And it worked, by the way. Um, there were some people that came out and proved that they're heretics because of the spirit of Antichrist test. And of course, because of the Jesus is the Lord thing. So that was what that was for. I'm not trying to just say it one more time. I'm not trying to give some kind of a, a, a special thing that you just forget somebody's testimony. All right, number six, God's word is your final authority. I should write final there, but God's word is your authority. 
Okay, let me say it one more time. King James Bible. There, not here. There. That's your final authority. I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance, okay, um, among all them which are sanctified. Let's finish the verse. Number seven, I'm not in it for the money. And you can't be either if you go into full-time ministry. Um, you're going to have to go through some really, really frustrating times. Um, <laughs> some times where it's going to be very hard uh, to continue. And I'm totally okay, too, by the way, with having a secondary income and whatever else. I've done that over the years. I've had other ways to make money. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you get into full-time ministry, there's many times that you just have to look and say, you know what? I really have to get this study done. I really need to get this book done or this video done or this tract done or, or whatever. Or I have to write this or do that or speak to this person. And, oh, man. Uh, I really should get this other work you know, secular work done so I can make money, but uh, the Lord just, you know, you'll feel this prompting of the Lord just kind of pushing, get that study done. And you just, you know, and I've done this before. I've just rebelled against the Lord and said, uh, well, right, right now I got to get this done. And the Lord will chasten me for that. And things will start to go wrong and I'll say, okay, I'll get the study done. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Um, you have to, like it says there in verse 35, um, um, to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Um, you will give of yourself and give of yourself and give of yourself, and you will not be adequately paid back for your time. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've worked for hours and 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 there's just no giving. Um, there's been times I've come out with so many sermons and just preached and preached and preached. Literally, my throat's going hoarse by the end of the thing. I, you know, I can <clears throat> I'm coughing and <clears throat> clearing my throat and everything else, and, and I'm just so physically exhausted, just drained. And then the spiritual attacks come and whatever else, and no donations, no giving, no anything. And you just think, well, okay, Lord, you know, you know why I did it, and. I'll do it again, you know, and you just, more blessed to give than to receive. Um, real ministry, you're not going to get rich. Just as simple as that. You'll see the blessing of the Lord come sometimes, and you'll see, hey, I really need whatever, and the Lord will bless you. That's there. Absolutely. Uh, the, Lord, the Lord will he'll keep you going. He'll, he'll not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. He'll keep you going, but boy, it gets hard sometimes the trying of your faith you know but uh i want to go over uh, the the tests so to speak for somebody somebody comes along and they say i'm a christian okay that's good um but you have to prove it okay so let me erase this This is very important, and it's getting to be more important because there's so many people that are false out there. So many people, especially on YouTube, that are that are fake. And uh, you know, you know what I mean. If you've been, if you watch anything on YouTube, you know there's a lot of frauds out there. <clears throat> I want to go over a couple things, okay? Proof of salvation. Is somebody truly born again? Are they saved? Number one would be their testimony. Okay, um, I mean, you can say confession, they're, 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 or profession, I should say. They profess to be saved, but what's their testimony? Okay, um, there's a lot of people out there that just say, oh, I'm a Christian. Okay, but what's your testimony? That's the, 
uh, number one thing there that I would say. Number two, fellowship of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, in other words. You will feel that thing sometimes. Um, you'll get around somebody, I'm a Christian, whatever, and you just kind of feel that, uh, uh, I don't know why, but I just feel really nervous around this person. And let's look at Acts chapter 26 here. Acts chapter 26, verse 19 and 20. Um, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Paul speaking here. Verse 20, But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Good works will follow true conversion. A changed life will follow true conversion. Okay? That is very important. Works are not required to save you or to keep you saved, but uh, works do come as a result of genuine salvation. Works for, well, not that redo that there. So if I say works for, you know, um, works meet for repentance. So what does that mean? Well, without going into a huge big study, let him that stole steal no more, but let, rather let him labor with his hands that he may give to him that needeth. book of Ephesians talks about that. Some uh, woman says, well, you know, I was a prostitute before I got saved. You say, what do you do now? Well, I'm still a prostitute. No, uh, some things changed. She says, no, I don't do that. In fact, I dress modestly now. I don't dress immodestly like I once did. Some guy says, uh, you know, I, I, whatever. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying here. Um, I mean, just, just as a way to illustrate this point, um, let's say some guy comes to your door and he, he walks up and, and uh, he's standing there and he's got a syringe in his hands. And you walk to the door and you say, uh, hello. And the guy says, let me in. I'm a doctor. I'm here to vaccinate your children. Um, you aren't going to just say to that guy, first of all, you shouldn't be vaccinated. But, you know, you aren't going to just say to the guy, oh, sure, come on in. Come on in. Come vaccinate. But you're going to say, okay, how do you prove that you're a doctor? I need to see some proof. I need to see this. I need to see that. You're going to, you're going to ask a bunch of questions. I'm, am I right? Some guy comes to your door, knocks on the door. Um, you come, hello? I'd like to take your children out into the woods for a walk. You say, okay, who are you? Oh, don't worry, I'm a Christian. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Hey, hey, kids, come on, come on. There's a Christian outside. He wants to take you out into the woods without me supervising it and go for a walk. Go on. He's a Christian. Don't worry, it's fine. No. <laughs> And yet there's people that that's all it takes. Somebody comes along and they say, I'm a Christian. I have a profession that they make. Okay. Um, I'll just do it this way. Let me just draw this profession and confession. Okay, um, proof of salvation, not proven. There's a lot of people that have a profession. I'm a Christian. Of course I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. They say a lot of the right things. I confess that Jesus Christ is my Savior. I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Well, that's fine, but uh, what's your testimony? How did you get saved? What did you get saved from? Could you please tell me a little bit more? Do I feel fellowship of the Spirit with you? That doesn't mean you have to get along perfectly and everything is exactly the same. You know, you both like the same collar and you both like the same kind of food or 
you know, whatever, the same toppings on your pizza or something. No, it's just that, you know, fellowship of the spirit here. Um, are you vexed by the world? Oh, I don't know. It's not so bad. I think it could be worse. There's a long time yet till the rapture. You go, uh-oh. Uh um, and they say, uh, hey, you know, are you going to vote for Donald Trump? Trump 2020, man. He's a good man. He's going to do great things. He's going to make America great again. You go, uh, okay. Ooh, uh. You say you're for the Jesuit president, which has the morals of an alley cat. <laughs> you're okay with that? Oh, what are you trying to say? He's a good man. He's better than Hillary. <laughs> um, we don't have much fellowship of the spirit, but they sure have a nice profession, don't they? I love Jesus. I'm a Christian too. I love the King James Bible. It's my most preferred version. Uh, no. How about works meet for repentance? You got saved, did you? Well, yes, absolutely. I'm a Christian. Uh, what happened after you got saved? What do you mean? Oh, 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 yeah. I, I, I went to church. I tithed. Oh, no, that's not what I'm talking about. How did your life change? You say you repented and turned to God, didn't you? You're a Christian. Um, what happened as a result? Does your life match what the Christians are like in the Bible? People hating you, casting out your name as evil, not getting along with friends and family and things like that. Did, did that happen? Oh, no, everybody loves me. But don't worry, because I'm a Christian. No, no, sorry. And uh, this thing of the Antichrist, spirit of Antichrist thing, you go to somebody and you say, well, you know, can you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? They can confess it all day long, but where's the belief? I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but I believe in the Trinity. No fellowship of the Spirit. What's the Trinity? Well, Jesus Christ is created. He's a separate person than the Father. All kinds of other issues there. You see? Um, how can we have fellowship of the Spirit when you believe in something that a Catholic confesses? You know what I mean? They believe in the Trinity. Yeah. And I don't have fellowship of the Spirit with them. Uh, I believe that Jesus is the Lord. That's a nice confession. But do you really believe it? Is He Lord enough to tell you what to do after you get saved? After you get saved? Say it one more time. After you get saved. Not to be saved. Okay, that's Lordship Salvation. Um, after you get saved, does He become Lord of your life? Doesn't mean you're sinlessly perfect. Again, you know, <laughs> people twist my words. Um, doesn't mean you're sinlessly perfect. It just means things change. He's now your master, your Lord. Uh, you see? They can confess that Jesus is the Lord all they want, but uh, if they're not submitting to Him over here, if their doctrines aren't right, they didn't get saved. They're not regenerated. They're not born again. You understand? Okay. So, just really wanted to come out and clarify because I know that there's been some controversy among the brethren. I, it was not my intent to create any controversy with this whole thing. Again, I was just trying to hook some false brethren heretics. And uh, I just want to say... Um, on the issue of Charles Lawson and David Daniels. Um, you know, I know some of the brethren have been saying that, you know, some people fail it and, and do they really believe it in their heart that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and they just slipped up in the, in the moment and they said has come in the flesh or whatever else. I get it. I understand that. But you know what? Uh, the Bible is very clear. You need to be real careful about that. That's a spirit of Antichrist. Um, Somebody might believe in their heart that Jesus is come in the flesh and yet they, it comes out of their mouth, has. Okay, humble yourself. Come out and say, hey, I just want to say, you know, whoa, okay, <laughs> I said has. No, no, no. The Bible says is come in the flesh. The Bible says Jesus is the Lord. 
I'm sorry. I mean, you know, like I said, hey, public challenge to anybody out there. If you can find any video where I've ever said Jesus is Lord, you know, um, or Jesus has come in the flesh, if you can find any video like that, I will publicly renounce it and just apologize and say, hey, I'm sorry, I messed up. Absolutely. I don't have pride in that area. So um, make it about this over here, brethren. Somebody comes to you and they say, and you know, YouTube is a tricky thing because you're not actually dealing with somebody in person. You know, I meet somebody, they'll come up, they see a, a, the magnet on my vehicle or whatever else. And they say, hey, praise the Lord for what, you know, that's great. And I say, are you born again? Are you a Christian? And they'll say, yes, I am. And I say, good, praise the Lord. And if the conversation goes any further, then we'll see where it leads. But I don't say, hold on, wait a second, pull out this big list, you know, and say, <clears throat> do you hereby confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Oh, yes, you do. Okay. Do you confess that Jesus Christ is, the, or Jesus is the Lord? Do you confess that you believe in the Trinity? Do you believe in the preacher of rapture? Do you believe in the King James? I don't, I don't go through all that stuff. Okay. When I meet somebody in person, I let the Lord direct that thing. I let the Lord lead in that area. If we have a conversation and I start seeing it going the wrong way and they start getting ticked off at me, which happens, <laughs> um, okay, I'll just kind of poke them a little bit and if it gets really bad, I'll say, you're not saved, you're not born again. Plain and simple. Sorry, I don't believe that you're saved. But uh, on YouTube, I have to, I'm not dealing with people in person, so I have to preach and have the standards of Scripture and just say, okay, if you believe that you're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble and you're not newly saved and just deceived by the false teaching of post-tribism, if you believe that you're going into the time of Jacob's trouble to be further purified, then I can tell you you don't understand salvation. You don't understand that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. You don't get it. Okay, you think that you're going into a time that's designed for the Jews, for the nation of Israel. You know, and they'll typically say, well, yeah, but we are the Jews now or something. And you go, oh, boy, <laughs> replacement theology. And that's why I just preach and say, if you're a post-tribber, you're lost. Because I can't deal with the person one-on-one. -on -one. If you believe this, if you believe that, then you're probably lost. Why am I doing that? I don't say you're lost, you can't get saved, whatever else. I'm saying you're lost. Please make sure of your salvation. Because I can't deal with them one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, I, again, I hope that that's understood. Okay, again, if you can't confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, if you are a Trinitarian and you militantly hold to this thing that Jesus Christ has come, that it doesn't matter, it has and is is the same thing and whatever, then I'm just going to call you lost. I'm just going to say, okay, you're lost. And these guys that come out and they say, they're looking at the text and they say, has come in the flesh. Well, the Bible says they have a spirit of Antichrist. Yeah, but brother, what about that? Don't watch those guys, okay? They failed that test. That's what I'm trying to say. Are there other little things there that, well, they might have been confused. They have too much pride to admit that they were wrong and whatever. Whatever, sure, absolutely. But again, the whole point of this video, don't go out of here and with this thing in your mind of, I don't need to check this stuff here, okay? You have to check these things. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I think verse 11, it talks about all these different things. In all things, you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. There's the approval of a Christian. You don't just, you know, the guy comes to the door and says, I'm a Christian. Can I take your children out into the woods and, and take, go for a walk with them? Or, I'm going to get to know, need to know you very, very well before that happens. Um, certain brethren, I would say, yeah, sure, I can trust you with my son. Absolutely. Um, very few brethren. <laughs> but, you know, it's because I've gotten to know them. I know their testimony. We have fellowship of the Spirit, and I've seen the works meet for repentance. I've seen them getting kicked around by the world and everything else. I trust certain people. Others, not so much so. Because all I see is a profession. And a confession of this and a confession of that. So... Hopefully I've cleared up that issue there. Um, you know, um, I hope you get it. So that is going to be it. Please remember, 
anybody comes to you and says, I'm a Christian, that's not enough, right? Um, in person, I'm a Christian, you say, okay, how did you get saved? I'd love to hear your testimony. How did you get saved? If there's time, if they're just walking by and say, hey, praise the Lord for your church. Well, okay, are you, are you saved? Are you born again? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, well, praise the Lord. They're walking by. You can't get in any more time to witness to them. But if they're standing there and they get to talking to you, it goes from this, what's your testimony? Fellowship of the Spirit. Are they quoting new versions? Are they saying things that are really kooky and off and whatever else and stuff? Um, and from there, has there been a changed life? Are their works meet for repentance? What's going on with their life? You have to judge these things. All right? And so much more as time goes by. Things get more and more controlled and whatever else. Please take heed to these things here. Um, and remember what I preached to you from the Bible. Okay, that's going to be it. We'll see you in the next video.